going to talk about micro G, like what it is now and what we're going to do with it in uh, the next months to years. So um, first of all, I wanted to know, um, like who of you actually knows what micro G is and who doesn't? So is it like, okay, so it's, it's majority knows. So um, like this one sentence thing that I always t use to explain to people is that it's just a framework to make the f everything running on your Android device. Uh, so all applications that you're used to, to, to uh, run on Android will also run with micro G. That's the idea, what you can do with, with micro G. And uh, all of this obviously without Google. So we don't want to have Google always involved with everything. And if we can get rid of it, then that's a good thing. Um, and that's uh, what micro G is about. So um, I'm kind of starting with, with Android first, so because I have to. Um, so you know that Android is supposedly to be open source. Google always promoting it as, uh, as open source. Well, what they mean is there's the Android open source project. Android open source project is kind of a completely open source operating system based on the Linux kernel, providing like all the uh, services, uh, a framework, an SDK, and so on. It's like everything you need to have an, a, a full operating system and uh, implementing uh, like applications on top of it. So it is technically something that's completely open source, but if you talk about um, uh, about Android, then you usually are not talking about the Android open source project. You're talking about something that adds something on top of AOSP, which is uh, a few additional SDK functions and uh, some service apps that run in the background and a lot of end user applications like Google Mail, uh, 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 Google Maps, all the stuff that you're used to or some are used to from a normal Android smartphone is not part of the AOSP and is also not open source. So uh, that's why this saying that Android is open source, that is used by Google a lot, is just, uh, it, it, it's just not like reflecting the reality of what people understand under the uh, term of Android. It's just that they can claim it because there is the Android open source project which is open source. Okay, so um, there's kind of the things that you get in there in the, uh, in, the, in the Android stuff specifically from Google. So I'm only f focusing here on the Google parts because usually if you buy a phone from whatever manufacturer, uh, there's also stuff from other companies in there like uh, the manufacturer, the chip, uh, chipset uh, 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 manufacturer and so on. So there's various components, but Google has this kind of set of things that they put on every uh, every phone basically, uh, even the non-Google phones. I mean, Google already, already has their own phones and they put more stuff even on those, but this is what goes on basically every Android smartphone. And it's like uh, uh, two additional SDK functionalities, which is the uh, white wine DRM system and, um, application, uh, and the library so that applications can embed maps. And they also provide two services uh, or two main services uh, they provide a lot more, which nobody really cares, so I don't focus on it here. And that is uh, one thing that's called the poor man GPS, which is uh, locating your device based on, on Wi-Fi or uh, GSM mobile networks or uh, uh, Bluetooth beacons or whatever. So uh, that's the one service which always uses Google, ob obviously, for, for locating you. And the other one is uh, what's called the uh, Google Play services on the end user side. And uh, uh, if you talk to a vendor, they will always Google, call it Google Mobile Services because that's what they are buying from Google. It's just got Google Play Services to the end user. And that's a uh, thing uh, providing uh, a ton of f features nowadays, which is a new version of the Maps uh, component, but also like push notifications and even uh, inc include security updates for uh, the TLS library of Android. So uh, if you don't have that, you actually get to use old TLS uh, libraries which tend to have security issues. So even security updates are provided only through this proprietary channel. And, uh, and many more, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it would have been too much slides to mention all of these features. Um, so I just go with these uh, important ones. Um, so that's what uh, uh, Google stuff is in, in the Android system. And uh, that's where MicroG basically comes, uh, comes in. So uh, uh, we want to kind of implement all of these features that are from Google. And uh, uh, we have the, the, the uh, maps, the original first version of the maps library, which is feature complete and runs pretty fine. 
um, and and we want to make it like in a way that all the applications can use it, right? So we don't want uh, to restrict in any way, and we don't want the applications to be modified in first place to be able to use it. We want everything to just run directly, and we for for uh, we even include the Google applications into it. So on on top of the as mentioned, we have the the service and framework, and we have the end user applications like Google Mail, and we even want the Google Mail applications to run because there are users that need Google Mail because they have uh, Google Mail for their work environment or whatever. So. Uh, they should still be able to use as much free software as possible. Uh, and, and that's when we want to make sure that we can have the services running, uh, which is always running in the background, to be fully free software, but still on top they can then decide to, I want to compromise there for whatever reason. So that's why, I want, why it's also possible to run all the Google applications uh, with micro G. Uh, but also another important topic, especially all the discussion about uh, uh, environment and so on, as these Google services are always running in the background, do tracking, they do uh, f for, 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 for advertisement and so on, uh, and it's always consuming some, some battery, which is completely wasted, uh, means that you have to charge your phone more often and whatever, so it's not like, a, like really uh, they are always with the, with the best intention for, for the users, uh, they are doing what they want to do. So, um, yeah, so that's also like an advantage we have uh, with, with MicroG. We can just get rid of all of this because we don't implement the tracking, we don't implement advertisements. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mentioned we have already the, the maps in a, in a fully functional thing. Actually, since 2016, we are finished with that. Uh, only the first version of the maps library because Google then decided, ah, oh, let's do another one. And, uh, that other one was more complicated and uh, uh, to, to realize. So it's mostly finished by now, but it's working on a completely technical different base and so on. So it was kind of a lot of work to get this done. And it's now part of the play services as well. Um, and uh, the other thing that we also have working is, is fully working is the uh, location based on, on Wi-Fi. Uh, so we kind of build up a community of uh, of, of Wi-Fi and GSM location information providers like open data or closed data when this, because open data quality is not always as good as, as needed in this, especially in this area because uh, you can, unfortunately for privacy reasons, it's not allowed to build up a Wi-Fi network database without the Wi-Fi, uh, a public Wi-Fi database without the Wi-Fi owner agreeing to it because the MAC address of a Wi-Fi is considered private information. So uh, that's why there's closed databases and there's uh, no open database. Base. There is an open database, but it's very low data quality because the device owner has to agree, which most don't do. Uh, fortunately, nowadays there is a project by Mo Mozilla to, uh, to collect these, even though the database is closed. Uh, it's an open API and so on, so um, that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, and we also support uh, uh, using this database. Um, and the other thing is the Google Play services, which is which I already mentioned, which contains like tons of features, and uh, which, because it's so much features, it's not completely implemented everything of it. So uh, we implement like the, the important parts, which uh, the, the new maps versions I mentioned, uh, the, the push notifications, which many apps like, in, in, uh, especially messaging applications, uh, uh, need to use, like. Uh, uh, like like WhatsApp and so on, which some people still want to use on, on top of their mostly free software phone, and uh, that's yeah. So that's, that's why we, we kind of go with the most important features there. But there's tons of features that we don't implement. Uh, uh, well aware of it being there, but uh, at least most applications do work, and it's kind of the main thing. And uh, we're kind of constantly improving, adding more fe more features. So yeah. Um, that, that, that we can we can improve on that, and uh, yes. So I want to give a bit of insight into the future what we want to do. So, um, but I'm probably going to go a bit faster through it because we don't have so much time. So it's um, uh, one thing about MicroG is uh, it's basically me doing it and this little outside contributions, and that's because it's a huge code base and. Uh, a uh, rather complex project and want to make it easier for others to contribute. And uh, I actually would want everyone who wants to, uh, to, to, to just look into it and try things out 
because this can be seen very easy to, to fix actually and uh, uh, it's just people are kind of afraid and I want to make it easier for them to find where is the code that is relevant for them. And there's other thing about not being easy is the installation process. So uh, we, the in especially in the past, installation was rather complex. Nowadays, there's uh, a great community effort of doing a Linux fork, which is MicroG pre-installed. So it became way easier uh, the, fir the first installation, but it still needs some setup progress that is not that easy to manage. So you need to know what to do. There's instructions for it, but it could be way easier as well. Um, and uh, skipping through this, I um, also wanted to, to talk about some not technical things here, because uh, uh, in this audience it makes sense to me. And uh, one of the things is I uh, wanted to talk about regulations. And uh, there has been some uh, regulations uh, regarding Android uh, in, in, in the last two years, basically. Uh, whilst here, uh, the, uh, the uh, European Commission decided that uh, uh, Google is not allowed to force the manufacturers to uh, force Google uh, the, for Google to force the manufacturers that they must like always get the full set of uh, of, of Google's uh, uh, services and, and applications and tools. So uh, before it was uh, like the manufacturers has to had to say we are using all of your stuff or we're using nothing and there was no middle ground and the uh, European Commission said it's that's not allowed anymore. So, uh, which, uh, the idea was good, but nowadays they are just licensing out the, uh, the, the services part that everyone wants to need for paid. And if you now install on top all the Google stuff, like applications and so on, then you get it for free. So it's kind of like manufacturers are not really making use of this new, new, new freedom because it's more expensive for them. And the other thing is, uh, which came out this year is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, default of Android always the search engine and the browser being Google search engine and Google Chrome, which also the European Commission found is not a good thing. And uh, now we get our nice browser choice back on Android, uh, which apparently will look like this. Uh, both so we get browser choice and search engine choice, uh, like we, we, we had in Windows. Um, but uh, yeah, there's an issue with that, and that's basically you have to pay as a browser Window or search engine to get on that list. So Google is kind of making a uh, public auction so that you can be on the, in, on the list. So only five uh, engines, uh, search engines or browsers will be displayed. So they're even making money now out of this uh, regulation from from the uh, uh, Commission. So uh, it's kind of like backfiring here. Um, I also want to talk about industry. So uh, there's some recent movements, uh, especially uh, uh, from, from, from manufacturers. Uh, so you probably all heard about uh, Huawei not being allowed to uh, sell phones with uh, Google anymore. So they are not selling phones right now in, 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 the, in Europe uh, because they fear that they cannot sell a product that doesn't, isn't compatible with most applications and with other Google services they cannot be compatible. So that's why uh, they are not selling right now and that's kind of also giving all the other manufacturers uh, a sign that there might be a problem with them so much relying on licensing stuff from Google and actually that stuff not being open source. So there's multiple manufacturers now looking into, into uh, getting, getting rid of it and also trying out MicroG. Uh, sometimes they, they like talk to me and sometimes they don't. So if it's, uh, fun, funny email, or you can probably cannot read it there, but was was contacted by some some uh, some Android related news website, and they, they told me, ah, oh, we have this thing that we got from one of our uh, uh, one of our like uh, 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 some journalists find out that there's a device apparently built a spe specific Android built, built for uh, um, from for Micro G for this device. And uh, do you know about anything, anything about it? And in that case, I didn't even know about it at that point. Uh, so uh, that's, that's funny because everyone just wants to write me emails about anything with Micro G. And uh, <laughs> then I get these nice emails. Um, so yeah, that's uh, like something that's being, uh, being done recently. And uh, uh, I really, really uh, think there's something going to be uh, uh, forward there. Uh, and uh, there's also like some other industry uh, people that are interested is um, some uh, companies that are selling specific uh, special versions of Android that are modified for uh
government or company use, so uh, that they want to get have special version of Android for for the uh, for the employee smartphones so they can be private and so on. And they are also looking into into micro G because, you know, maybe as a as a government, I don't want everything to be shared with Google. And uh, there's also something called secure containers or work environments where you, on on top of your smartphones you install a secure container where you can install apps inside a container, uh, which is then like sandbox from the rest of the operating system. And uh, you also don't probably want don't want like Google in these containers. So yeah, there's like in, in this area there's kind of like a, a movement there, and uh, I'm I'm very confident that it's actually in in the next year we'll see quite some uh, public industry usage of micro G actually so uh, it's a bright future all right that's it